hit the road to explore the water in Peterborough and the Kawarthas. I'm Steph and you're watching Modern Traveler. And now I have hat head, but that's okay. That was fun. I'm just wrapping up a road trip in the Peterborough and the Kawarthas region, exploring all the ways that we can use our cars and our roads to connect us to water. The water in this area is so important to this region and the history of Canada, frankly. It's well known as a region that's rich in a long history with the canoe, which if you know Canada, if you are Canadian, you know the canoe is a very important symbol and historic method of transportation for us. So on this road trip, I'm going to take you through all the ways you can explore Peterborough and the Kawarthas and connect yourself with the canoe and with water and with this country's amazing waterways in a variety of ways. But first, let's talk about the car. As you can see, this is a Subaru Outback. It's 2024 and this is the Onyx edition. So you'll see all sorts of fun blacked out bits on the outside, very on trend with the blackout thing that's going on with cars these days. I did bring a kayak here to Peterborough. It turns out I didn't need it. There are watercraft and they're plentiful in this part of the province. So don't feel that you need to have one to enjoy all the things I'm going to talk to you about. You can rent canoes and kayaks and all that sort of thing up here. But if you have one and you want a vehicle that it straps to very easily, this is a really great choice. This Onyx Edition does not have a panoramic sunroof, which is typically desirable in an SUV, but here the standard sunroof makes it much easier to use simple foam blocks to strap the kayak to the roof. It's also got all the other great outdoorsy things going on that an Outback does, like 22 centimeters of ground clearance more if you opt for the wilderness trim. And one thing that's especially nice is that because it's still technically a crossover, but not as tall as most mid-sized crossovers would be, SUVs, it's also not overly tall with a boat strapped to it, and so it's a little easier to move around and get moving with a little bit more confidence. At one point, a colleague got into the car and said, oh no, my pants are wet, I don't want to wreck your upholstery. I said, it's a Subaru, <laughs> this is what these are made for. And if you know, you know, right, that this is the car for you. It's definitely geared toward the outdoorsy type, the standard all-wheel drive. It's just a no-brainer if you do this kind of thing a lot. Just over 43,000 Canadian for this Onyx edition. And as I mentioned, it is quite on trend with the blackout features. So great choice for a lot of people out there for sure. The one potential downside is fuel economy. I am averaging 9.9 .9 liters per hundred right now, which is not bad for the size of the vehicle and the fact that I've got a boat strapped to the roof, but you could probably do a little better if you really wanted to seek that out. But for the benefits that the Outback offers, there's a lot to go for here. Back to Peterborough and talking about the water. Now, the city really has Little Lake as a centerpiece and much of what goes on in and around the city goes on around Little Lake. And everything I'm gonna talk about today can be found in this part of the city. It's a centerpiece in the historic Trent Severn Waterway National Historic Site managed by Parks Canada. It's not just any waterway. It's a very important and historic part of Canada. And the centerpiece of the road trip is the brand new redesigned Canadian Canadian Canoe Museum in Peterborough. This is having its grand opening on May 11th. It's a beautiful new facility redesigned with a lot of important factors in mind. It's now on the waterfront, which the previous facility was not. And so not only can you walk through the exhibitions and the galleries and see hundreds of historic canoes, each that have their own story, but you can also rent a canoe or take their Voyager canoe experience and get out on the water yourself and really connect with the canoes and understand in more detail their importance and their why they matter in the history of this part of the country that is so connected by water. And if you want a bite to eat, there's a little bit more history inside the museum too. The Silver Bean Cafe has been present in Peterborough for 20 years, now has an outpost inside the museum as well. So you can check out the canoes, get out on the water. You can paddle over to go through some of the locks with a rental canoe actually on the Trent Severn waterway, and then come back and have a bite to eat at the cafe. And I'm told the sandwiches are delicious. I wasn't able to have one myself, but they come highly recommended. 
And speaking of the Trent Severn Waterway, if you can get on the waterway, it's such a fantastic thing to do in the summer to really immerse yourself in everything that's going on in this part of the province. And in Peterborough is the crown jewel of the Trent Severn Waterway, the Peterborough Lift Lock. This is a fascinating place. And if you can get a chance to learn about it, please do. It's not electronically operated at all. It runs entirely on physics. It's really cool. So they empty one tub a little bit less than the other when they want to shift the locks and it all operates on hydraulics. It's really, really neat. And this is just one of the 45 locks throughout the Trans Severn Waterway. I'm one of those people that would love to spend weeks in a boat wandering up and down the waterway and checking out all the locks and, and sailing through it. I've actually driven to most of the locks. Almost all of them can be accessed by road as well. I'm going to repost that road trip on my website, roadtripper.ca, pretty soon um, if you're interested in checking that out because you don't have to be a boater to appreciate the Trent Severn. But if you are a boater, you're going to want to get out there. And one of the cool things that they do at the Peterborough Lift Lock every year is an event called Lock and Pass. Paddle. This is exclusively for non-motorized watercraft, your canoes and your kayaks. No stand-up paddle boards, unfortunately, no inflatables. But if you paddle a canoe or kayak, you can show up, put your boat in the water and paddle in with some hundred or so at a time people in their boats who cram into the Peterborough lift locks and then all get to ride up all at once. It's amazing, it's social, it's colorful. I haven't done it yet. It's been on my bucket list for a long time. Really would love to get out there this summer. But if you're a paddler, it's a must do event. And their big story this year is that it's becoming a triple crown. This has been such a successful event for Parks Canada that they're adding on the same day, events at the Rideau Canal near Ottawa and also the Lachine Canal in Montreal. So you can come in one year and do the lock and paddle at the Peterborough Lift Lock and you can do it the next year at the Rideau and you can do it the year after that at the Lachine and go for your Triple Crown. It's a really cool addition to what was already a great event. If you are one of those people like me and you would really just love to rent a houseboat and spend a week or two or more wandering up and down the Trent Severn and being the captain with my little captain's hat you saw earlier, boy do I have a tip for you. There's a new feature on the Trent Severn waterway called Le Boat and this is a company that's based in Europe. They've been operating on in places like the Canal du Midi in France and elsewhere in Europe for a long time, arrived in Canada seven years ago and have been operating on the Rideau Canal and now they're expanding their operations to the Trent Severn Waterway, which is a really exciting development. Such a cool place to be able to operate a houseboat. They will have seven and 14 day itineraries where you can start in Peterborough where their base is and head up with a houseboat toward the Kirkfield lift locks or all the way down to Trenton on Lake Ontario and you can rent this houseboat. You can get them with two cabins all the way up to five cabins with ensuite bathrooms. So really nicely laid out, very easy to maneuver. I had a chance to operate it myself and that was a lot of fun. So I can vouch for the fact that they are easy to drive. They actually kind of feel like just a loose race car, like you've got the back wheels a little bit, you're skidding around. It's a lot of fun. And one of the points they make about it is that it's just really simple to get out there and they'll give you a 45 minute demonstration and then you're ready to go. So it's something anybody can do. Honestly, anybody can do and it's sort of like having a cottage on the water. You can be in a different town every night or you can stay put and just swim off the end of the boat and, and treat it like a cottage. It's really a lot of fun. That sound that you hear is the wind vibrating the kayak, by the way. <laughs> Nothing I can do about that, unfortunately. We were part of the group that were the very first to launch out of Le Boat's new base on the Trans Severn Waterway. So that was a real honor to ride in some of their eight boats that are now based there near Peterborough and just take a little run around in the water and feel what these boats are like, take a walk through them. Really, really cool to see. And I hope to be able to get out in one of these myself someday. And as I mentioned, all of these things in Peterborough are near or at Little Lake or can access Little Lake. You can paddle into Little Lake, you can paddle past Middle Lake on the Trent Severn or take the boat into Little Lake. And it's really just a centerpiece for Peterborough. Surrounding Little Lake, there's even more to do in Peterborough. You can go to the Peterborough Art Gallery, which is a really impressive collection of art created by local artists or featuring local history. 
there's the Peterborough Museum and Archives where you can check out their collections. They change all the time featuring different elements of Peterborough's history. Or if you time it right, this could be a really cool thing. You could visit Peterborough at the right time to go to a concert as part of Peterborough Music Fest. Peterborough Music Fest is an institution in the city. Every Wednesday and Saturday through the summer, they have free concerts and not just any free concerts. They get some big names through. So if you can time your visit, you could take a little boat or rent a canoe and paddle over to enjoy a show at the Peterborough Music Fest. Maybe book a room at the Holiday Inn if you don't have a La Boat and you need somewhere to stay overnight. The Holiday Inn was very nice. And it's just a quintessential Peterborough experience to be on the water and then be on the land and enjoy the art and the music of the city. Really, really fun way to spend some time in the summer. You're watching this video at Modern Traveler and you'll be able to read more about all of this very soon at my website, roadtripper.ca, very soon. So I hope you do check that out and consider Peterborough for your water-based summer adventures because now that the Canoe Museum is open and La Boat is here and there's so much to see and do in the city connected to the water, it's really a fabulous summer destination. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, please hit that little button down there that lets you subscribe so you don't miss any more videos here at Modern Traveler because we would love for you to see them and comment on them and let us know what you think. You can also find Modern Traveler on all the major social media platforms, so please connect and thanks for watching.